just got this in. It's the G-Line Hobby UFO 85X 4K. It is a new contender to the growing world of drones known as Cinewoops. So the main reason to consider one of these is to have a small, under 250 gram FPV drone that can take high definition video. The ducted design makes them very safe to fly both outdoors and indoors. Uh, it wasn't until recently that drones of this size and form factor could deliver high def video at this price point. So let's find out how this Cinewoop in particular performs. The UFO 85X delivers really nice video for a non-stabilized camera. Jello is practically non-existent. The camera model is the Cadex FPV Tarsier 4K. It consists of two sensors, one is for your FPV view and the other is for the high definition video. This compartmentalization of the sensors keeps your first person view experience lag free or virtually lag free while not compromising on recorded video at all. It's great because both sensors do one thing and they do it well. The camera is a big part of the whole package here. As a matter of fact, it sells for 90 US dollars alone. So it's not cheap, but for good reason, as there really isn't much else like it at the moment. The best way to use this camera, in my opinion, which may surprise you, is to not shoot in 4K. Yeah, I know. Bear with me here. Set the camera to film in 1440p at 60 FPS, then use video editing software to apply a dynamic stretch view slash filter. Export it in 4K at 60 FPS in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio and then upload it to YouTube for best results. You're going to get a way better looking video by doing this and it's something I didn't learn about until recently. The 4K only goes up to 30 FPS on this camera, and the aspect ratios are really weird when we all want a 16 by 9. I think that the post-process footage in this video speaks for itself. I've had three of these cameras so far, and I enjoyed trying something different, you guys, uh, this time for the review. I'm intending to do a full review of the Tarsier 4K in the future, which reminds me, uh, version 2 of the camera is out, and it apparently has a new and better lens with a greater field of view. If you already own version 1, CADEX will send you the new lens and an ND filter for free. Uh, the UFO X in later batches will include the new V2, but the ones sent for review are wanting V1. All, all the video I shot as well uses the V1 lens. How well does this perform in acro? The main point of a Cinewoop is to take video, so none of them are going to be acro beasts. But it was certainly capable of some, and it's still something I like to see, because there are some Cinewoops out there that just fly like crap. If you try to pull any moves, you're just going to crash. Uh, with this one, you can do some split S's, you can do your power loops, um, flips. It sure feels a little heavy doing them, but it can be done, which also means that y you can send it into a dive after a split S. And, you know, that's useful to get a downward looking shot if you need to. I thought it would have had a little more power with the 4S and the motors, but to my disappointment, it didn't. I think. Between the motor size and the canopy, it's really got some weight that makes it feel heavy while you're performing acrobatic moves. So if you plan to use it for that, remember, you're just going to need to compensate for it. You will feel it. Of course, a Cinewoop that is not an Acro Beast is not a showstopper, though, because, again, they're not supposed to be. It's just really cool to be able to do some. So let's go over the construction of the drone. We have a hard plastic canopy that's sturdily built and has two screws here in the front with thick plastic securing this camera down really well very nice for keeping vibration from getting to the camera um, the camera's control board is actually mounted up here in the canopy right there is your little micro sd card slot um, the supra f4 flight controller is mounted down in the bottom of the frame here it sits right in this 85 millimeter frame. The video transmission antenna kind of just sticks right out the back here, which isn't the most secure. Uh, you can use a zip tie to fix that up. 
I didn't because I kind of ran out of small zip ties. So I just flew it as is. And I'm lucky I did, haven't clipped my antenna. I crashed pretty hard with it so far. Uh, the frame and canopy have held up. So no complaints there. I've flown uh, Cinewoop previously, the Ishin Cinecan, and I ended up busting uh, one of the screws in the front. This canopy, much stronger than that in my opinion. So the propellers are the Emax 2035 four blade. And if they look a little green, it's because I've eaten grass with this thing, okay? Couldn't get some of that green out of the props. So uh, here they are. You do get a spare set in the case. You get some red ones. Um, you also get a control board for the camera. I'm going to show you that here. A little control board. You get this little pad for the battery thing. And here's, again, here's a little case. You also get a spare battery strap, uh, this tool for the motors, and you also get some documentation and some other spare parts in this little case. So yeah, one of the most important parts that it comes with is the Cax Tarsier ND8 filter, and this is about an $8 USD part, and it is an ND filter. It goes right over both camera lenses here. It's great for reducing glare if you've got sun. I have been using it, and it also helps. Again, it's another thing to help reduce jello. You don't want to use this in really, really low light, obviously, because it, it's an ND filter. The UFO 85X comes with an interesting choice of motor here. We've got GL 1024 5000 KV motors and G-Lang has recommended a 4S battery for them. Now it comes with this 4S 260 milliamp hour LiPo battery. I'm not a fan of it. The flight time on it is just too short unless you're gently hovering indoors. You know, for these motors, it really just is too short. My choice is the GNB 450 milliamp hour battery. Uh, this is the little skinny high voltage LiPo from GNB. It, just right. It's not too heavy. It fits in the strap here, this little strap. Once you move it down a notch, you see the little notches there, just move it down so you get the maximum space to fit a battery and it, it fits great. I'm just go ahead and slide it in here. Again, really, really easy to, and look at how it fits. That fits great. Um, I get about three to four minute flight times with this battery and you could easily gently hover for like five minutes. Um, these are some newer skinny style batteries from GNB designed for whoops, for toothpick drones uh, in mind and I've been pretty happy with them in general. Uh, some 520 batteries as well from GNB would be a good choice too. I wouldn't go any higher than that. Um, even a 650 is too big for the strap. You would have to do something else. You'd have to use a rubber band or, or something else. Um, and 450 is just fine. I'm using, as I'm using LIHV batteries in the power and battery section of Betaflight, I changed the maximum voltage to 4.4. Don't forget to do that. So your drone and OSD is not freaking out thinking that you have low battery when you don't. One of the things that I hate about micro quads are the integrated receivers for control. Integrated SPI free sky based receivers have some really terrible issues in my experience that lead to absurdly short range and random dropouts. Uh, G-Lang was smart to include an external receiver located in the bottom. It's, it's the little red receiver there down the bottom. This FreeSky D16 receiver is called the XBOSS receiver. Um, it has a single antenna and it is capable of RSSI telemetry on channel 16 or AUX 12 in beta flight. And you can set that up in your radio and in your on-screen display from the beta flight OSD section so you can get your signal strength right in your OSD. There is a small bind button to press on this receiver when you're powering it up. It can be really fiddly to have a battery plugged in and be trying to press that. You're gonna need a 
really thin screwdriver or something to press that button. I would really recommend a second set of hands to help you out with binding to this receiver. Uh, you only have to do that one time. And again, you're going to get at least 300 meters of range from the X-Boss, in my experience, which should be more than sufficient for a Cine Whoop. I never had it fail safe. I do wish that it was a real branded RXSR, though. So that's it. That's my review of the UFO 85X. Uh, overall, I really like it, and I can recommend it if you want an 85mm Cine Whoop. I hope you enjoyed the review, and I hope you found it honest as well as informative. If you liked the video, please hit that like button, and it really helps the channel. You know, have you got a Cinewoop? Did you buy this UFO X? How do you like it? Uh, let me know. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section. As always, have a great day, guys, and I I'm going to do some flying.